Hello, welcome to another reading vlog. This week, like last week, I'm continuing to try to keep my life together, get my life together. Not sure if I've gotten it together yet. A little bit, more than I was. So I want to keep that going and I also want to keep my reading going. Uh, last week was an okay reading week, but I think I can do better. Now admittedly, it's already halfway through the week, but... I am going to go to a book fair on Friday. I have the day off work. I meant to always have Fridays off, but it hasn't always worked out in the past. But this Friday, I'm definitely going to take the day off. I am going to be watching for one particular important email. But other than that, I'm just going to go to this book fair and enjoy myself. I have been trying to get to TBR Zero. So technically, I probably shouldn't go too crazy at the book fair. But actually, I think I'm just going to let myself buy whatever I want because I don't care and future me can deal with it if she is feeling bad about having too many books on her shelves. But also, the only books left on my physical TBR shelf are books that I obtained this year. So like, it's not like I'm doing terribly at TBR Zero because I'm TBR Zero for books purchased before this year. Like, I can argue that I've been successful. Anyway, I am also hoping to read some books that I'm excited about this week. Uh, I've got a couple here. Uh, I have also already started on an audiobook, so I've been reading The Haunting of Hill House. Now, I picked this up because we watched the Netflix series, The Haunting of Hill House, and I was watching it and I thought this was a lot of fun, but also I bet the book would do it better. Uh, what I have found, though, is that the story in the book is a completely different story. There are characters with the same names, except in the TV show, there's the older sister is called Shirley. And I was like, that's the author's name is this character, just like she named a character after herself, but there's no Shirley in the book. So I think they named it Shirley after the author. And there's definitely parts in the book that relate to the show, things that are happening in the house that happen in the book. And like, there's parts of the story also match the show, but the actual setup is completely different. So in the show, we've got this family that moves into this old house to try and renovate it, and then spooky things start happening, and we are following them mostly as adults, kind of dealing with the aftermath of what happened in this house. But in the book, it's actually this scientist who wants to write a paper about haunted houses or something, and he has picked some people to come and be his assistants to go to this house and see what kind of spooky stuff they might experience. Uh, as I said, some of the characters have the same names, and so in my head I'm imagining the actors from the show, although they're not related in the book. But I am waiting to see if there might actually be some connections between them. And it does also have like a very distinctive writing style. Uh, the only thing I've read by Shirley Jackson before is we have always lived in the castle, I think it's called. I really liked that, but it is this really atmospheric writing that I think uh, some people wouldn't like. I don't mind it, but it makes the story much more about the atmosphere rather than the plot. Uh, even the characters, you get to know them a little bit, but you're getting to know them in a very atmospheric way. So like, I know the feel of the characters, but I don't actually know the characters, if you know the difference. So I'm about halfway through that. Um, so far, mostly just hints of strangeness about this house, a little bit of the history of the house, but nothing actually awful has happened. Nothing actually scary. I'm not sure if anything actually scary is going to happen or if it's just going to be like this, this anticipation of something scary happening or like hints that maybe something's happening. I don't know, but uh, tonight I'm going to try and read some more of that while I think I'm actually going to just do some housework around the house. I was going to go for a walk and I know in my last vlog I said rain walks are still definitely worthwhile for the fresh air. However, several times today when it looked like it was kind of fine, it then like poured down really heavy and I like rain walks but not when it's like pouring down. So I think just to be safe. I might stay home tonight. Uh, also, I'm feeling very awake and motivated, which is a big change from how I have been feeling after work. So I think I will try and use that motivation to be a little bit productive tonight. Uh, once I finish The Haunting of Hill House, I also have another audiobook that I'm excited about, which is Ruby Fever by Alona Andrews. Uh, this is the third book in the second Hidden Legacies series. So this series follows this family of private investigators, but also in this world where people have different psychic abilities uh, and they have ended up working with some very powerful and dangerous people. 
And at this point also have kind of been positioning themselves in a place of power. I've really loved this series. I always love Alona Andrews writing to be honest. So I'm very excited to read this. I'm not sure if it's going to be the last book in the series because the first trilogy followed the older sister. The second trilogy is following the middle sister and then there is a younger sister but I'm not sure if she's planning to write a trilogy for her or not. She is very different, that younger sister, than the other two. So it would be interesting if she does, but I'm not sure if she's planning to or not. Really, I will read pretty much anything that Alona Andrew writes. And luckily, they, I said she, but actually it's a husband and wife duo. Luckily, they do write a fair amount. I think they've slowed down over the years, but there's still plenty that I need to read and catch up on. So yay for me for having lots of good books to read. I'm very excited about reading that audiobook. I've had the hold for a long time because I'm definitely not the only one that loves this series and I didn't get in early enough when the audiobook first appeared in my library app. Anyway, this feels like the longest intro. Uh, so I also have a couple of physical books. Uh, firstly, I've got Before the Memory, Before Your Memory Fades by... Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is the third book in the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. When I first read it I didn't know it was going to be a series and it is kind of written like a series of short stories. They do build on each other so you do need to read them in order but at the same time they're kind of, what's the word? Complete within themselves so you don't have to read the whole series uh, but I did really like the first book. I liked the second one a little bit less but I still really liked it. This third one to be honest I started reading it last night and it didn't immediately capture me like the previous two books did. I feel like the last two books you were always getting introduced to new characters and new situations whereas this feels like it's trying to build on the previous books a lot more and I don't know if I like that. And I'm not sure how I'm feeling about the writing style either, although I'm not sure if it's different from the previous ones or not. But anyway, I will try and read some more of this. Hopefully I can get into it a little bit more or I'm going to be really sad because I was excited when I found out that there was going to be more to this series. So I haven't actually said what the series is about. Basically there is a cafe and if you go to this cafe once a day there is a seat that you will have an opportunity to sit in and when you sit in that seat and drink your coffee you will be able to go back in time but you can only stay back in time until your coffee gets cold. Uh, you can't leave your seat, you can't change the past. So there's a lot of boundaries and restrictions around it but I, I have really enjoyed the way that really human emotional stories are explored within those boundaries. So fingers crossed I can get back into this and as well if I can find the time I'd like to pick this up again, The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cowell. So this is a story, uh, it's the third book in a series. I read about half of it and then just my life was too much of a mess to continue but like I said hopefully back together so hopefully I can get back into this. I was actually really loving it. Uh, basically on this one we've got a moon colony uh, because the world was hit by a meteor. It's really on the way out. Uh, the government's really focusing on space travel and getting people off the planet. The people who are going to be left on the planet however are not very happy uh, and so they are attempting to sabotage this moon colony. This is also set around the time when polio was a big thing so there's themes in here about vaccinations, I guess also just equality, uh, racism, sexism, classism, lots of really interesting themes. I do really enjoy these books and I really do enjoy Mary Robinette Cowell's writing style. It was just my brain last time and also like the fonts relatively small, the pages are very thin. So there's actually quite a lot to this book. Um, it's like 500 and something pages. So you know when I only got halfway through before I still had read a decent amount of it uh, and I really want to know what's going to happen. So hopefully we can find some time for this one as well. Anyway as I said longest intro to a vlog ever so I'm going to go and do some housework, listen to my audiobook uh, and then I'll update you again when we've made some progress. Hello, so it's been a little while since I updated this vlog again. 
Uh, it's now Saturday, so I've been to the book fees today. It was a lot of fun. But also yesterday, even though I was trying not to work, there were lots of annoying emails. And then today, I'm feeling kind of hay fevery. Ugh, so annoying. Anyway, let me catch you up on my reading, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what I got from the book fair. Firstly, I did finish off The Haunting of Hill House, and I actually think I probably should have read it around the same time I've read Just Like Home, like I did, but in two different vlogs. Uh, very similar in that they're both haunted house stories, and also that in the end, I really wanted more from both of them. I feel like The Haunting of Hill House was very, like, leaning into being all about the feeling and the atmosphere and in the end there wasn't really much substance which to be honest is almost how i feel about the tv show as well even though the tv show was very different so that's frustrating because i feel like there's a really good story there but it just hasn't been fully realized that said i did still like the haunting of hill house i think it's it's an okay story if you're willing to accept it for what it is but it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. I definitely still would recommend We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson more, but I would also say that that one is the same kind of writing style, very like atmospheric, but it does have a little bit more of a plot because there's this whole murder mystery thing kind of going on. Anyway, after that I finished that, I did start listening to the audiobook of Ruby Fever, which I was very excited to read, but then I was listening to it on my way to work and there was some traffic disasters, so I kind of stopped listening to it and I realized when I pulled into my car park that I hadn't been listening to it. And since then I haven't found any time to listen to it, which is very annoying, but maybe I'll get some time soon. I don't know, Jace is gonna come around and we're gonna try and enjoy the sunshine. Hopefully going out in nature won't make my hay fever worse, but we'll see. Anyway, sunshine and then reading is the order we're doing things in. Uh, as well, I did read a little bit of Before Your Memory Fades, uh, but again, not very much, and then I just fell asleep, so I haven't made much progress on it. What I have realized is that this is actually set in a different cafe from the other ones, but this cafe also has a seat where people can travel back in time. Uh, and people from the family who run the original cafe have come to this one to help run it because they're the only ones who can do the whole time travel thing. But I haven't gone far enough yet to actually have any time travel happening. But maybe soon. Maybe soon because this woman did just arrive. So <sighs> I just need to not be tired all the time and then I could read some of that, I think. Again though, sunshine, then reading is the order we're doing things in. So then I went to the book fair. I didn't hold back. I didn't get too many books that I think were que questionable purchases, but I did buy quite a few. So these are all the books that I bought that I haven't read, and then I also bought these ones that I have read. So firstly, I bought Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which uh, goes with this one. I was pretty excited to find this one actually. This is my favorite book in the series, and I think you can read it as a standalone. Uh, so this one is going to go on my shelf and I'll definitely reread it at some point. To be honest, every time I'm struggling with this, I think about reading this instead now, but I probably won't do that. Uh, I also picked up Ready Player One. I really hated Ready Player Two, but I do think I like Ready Player One. It's hard when you read a sequel and you don't like it to try and remember that you did like the original book. But again, it was super cheap. All the books at this book fair were really cheap. It's like secondhand books and all the money goes to charity so I got this one just to like be able to read it at some point again in the future. Same with I got Project Hail Mary. I have The Martian so I thought it would be good to have the pair of these that I've read by Andy Weir uh, and there's in I don't know what to say without spoiling it. There's a character in this that I really love so I thought it was a good one to have in my collection. And then I also got The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. This is the third book in the series. I have the first book in a very different edition. I definitely prefer this edition. Look, look how beautiful this book is. I don't have the second book. I'd love to have the whole... I just dropped all the books on the ground. I'd love to have the whole series. Oh, and I hit myself on the head. I'm failing at life. I'd love to have the whole series in this edition, but... It's probably not meant to be, but we'll try. Maybe it'll turn up in a book fair or a secondhand shop at some point. Um, I probably wouldn't buy it new though, because uh, that's things get expensive. Okay, then books that I haven't read. Uh, I picked up 100 Years of Solitude. I don't really like these orange penguin editions, but um, I have been wanting to read this and I thought, why not get it 
in physical form so i did that uh, i also picked up a couple of new zealand authored books so both of these a declaration of the of rights of magicians by hg parry i don't remember what this one's about but i do remember i wanted to read it and then also this one the time lizards archaeologist i've never heard of this but i read the back and it's talking about time travel so i thought why not pick up a new zealand authored book that's got lizards archaeologists and time travel in it sounds cool then i picked up a couple which i guess are thrillery ones so the dry by jane harper there's some kind of story actually i don't know i just said a thriller i don't know how much it's actually thrilling a murder mystery by the looks of it set in australia so i wanted to read that uh, also the push which i can't remember i think maybe it had something to do with ai or something but i also know it's on my tbr so even if i can't remember what it's about i did want to read it i also picked up the mortalist by chloe benjamin this is one where some kids have their fortune told and then that kind of impacts their whole life or something again one i had on my tbr i went through my tbr on goodreads the other day and was tidying it up so i had all these books in my head which was quite useful actually i also grabbed the first and third books from this knife of never letting go series i think the series actually called chaos walking by patrick ness again one i was interested in i think it's one where there's no woman and men can also hear each other's thoughts and i believe the formatting is kind of weird like you can see here probably you can't see because the lighting is so bright that is the sun uh, there's like some actual written bits within the typed text so i was a bit sad that the second one didn't seem to be there I'm tempted to go back to the book fair on Sunday. I've done this before because by the time it gets to Sunday, they've put up a whole bunch of new books. So we might go back. We'll see what we're doing on Sunday. Could go back today too, but that's probably a little bit over the top. But I picked up both of those. Again, maybe at some point fate will put the second book in my hands. Or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, and then I got The Shadow of the Wind, which again, I've forgotten what it's about. Something about um, a book... And this guy realizes that all the other editions of it are being destroyed or something. I don't know, but it's one that, again, a lot of people say is really great. So I picked that one up too. And then as well, I don't actually know which ones now, but I picked up some Sweet Belly High books. Uh, I've kind of been picking these up whenever I see them at secondhand shops with the idea at some point of reading these. I didn't read a lot of Sweet Belly High books when I was a teen. But my cool friend who lived in the house on the back of my parents' property, and really she was too cool for me, but because we live right next to each other, we would hang out sometimes, and she had a lot of Sweet Belly High books, and I was always kind of jealous. So I just had Babysitter's Club ones, which were like not quite as cool, I thought. But then I've read a lot more Babysitter's Club books than I've read Sweet Belly High ones. Uh, and I'd like to read some of these at some point and see if I remember any of them. I did read quite a few of them, I think. It's hard to remember at this point, but I've kind of just been collecting them to see how many I could get together. And again, they were super cheap, those ones, because they were in the children's section. I do notice at this book fair, uh, they kind of have like the main room and then they have a separate section for children and YA. But a lot of the books that are in the YA section are also in the main room. And then as well, they always put like all the really old science fiction and fantasy books in the children's room. And I feel like some of the older people at the book fair would probably really like those books, but also probably aren't even aware that they're in the children's room. So I always feel like that's a bit dumb, but I think it's because the books are cheaper in the children's room and they think a lot of these books are like not very good quality and that no one would be willing to pay $3 for them. Anyway, that's my book fair haul. It's completely blitzed my plan for TBR Zero. However, I've decided I don't care and I, I don't know, I'll work that out later. That's a problem for later, Penny probably a problem for a penny that's not working which unfortunately is not me but still it's the weekend so i'm not working right now i'm gonna go and enjoy the sunshine and then catch up with you again later Hello, so I am glasses pinning today because I kept rubbing my eyes too much with my hay fever and now I'm remembering the problem with glasses is this whole glare situation. 
I already ruined one contact from rubbing my eyes, so I need to save money and not ruin all my contacts. Uh, so we'll wear glasses for a little bit at least. I don't know about wearing it to work because I don't think any of my work people have seen me in glasses and they know that I look different but the same. Anyway, it's Sunday. I've been having a pretty lazy day. I've had some really marvelous naps. However, I did actually do some productive things this morning. I went to the supermarket and I also went back to the book fair and got myself some more books. Only five more, not that many. To be honest, it was really quiet at the book fair and there weren't, like there was still a lot of books left, but not that many really. Like there were definitely gaps on the tables and there weren't any books left in boxes under the tables. But so I picked up five books. Uh, I'll show them to you and then I'll tell you about the rest of my reading. Firstly, I got a couple of work-related ones. So I got The Fifth Discipline, which is all about learning organizations. Very interesting topic. Uh, also, Kniffen model stuff, uh, all about sense-making. I've always thought the Kniffen model is a little bit overhyped, but I also will admit uh, that I always feel like the people who talk about it sound a lot like they are trying to prove how smart they are rather than actually try to explain the concept to me. So I don't know if this book will also come across as just trying to be clever, but I thought I'd get the book and give it a go, actually understanding it fully, maybe. Although, let's admit, I don't have any time to read workbooks at the moment, so that's going to be a project for well into the future. Maybe if I could get some space in my head, then I could, like, spend some time learning some stuff again. Anyway, I also got a few uh, physical books. A couple of them are New Zealand authors. Uh, so firstly, I found Into the Ashes by Lee Murray. I don't actually know where this is in this series, but this is like a creature horror series set in, like, the native bush, native forest of New Zealand. Um, I read the first one and I really loved it. Basically had this like dinosaur type tanifa trying to eat people who were in the forest and I really loved the characters and the way it built anticipation. Like I wasn't expecting to love it because these covers to me don't look that great even though when I was buying this the guy at the book fair actually was like oh that one looks interesting and I thought eh, yeah but uh, even though I don't particularly like I just, I don't normally like war stuff, so soldiers on the front doesn't look exciting to me. But I really liked the first book in this series, and so I'm excited to read more of it. And I was excited to find a physical copy, because uh, I think I read the first one in ebook. And I think I might actually own more of the series in ebook form, or at least that's how I was planning to continue the series. But hey, now I've got a physical one. Anyway, that one's exciting. Uh, I also picked up In My Father's Den by Maurice G. So I don't. I recognized the name and I was like, oh yeah, that's a New Zealand author. And then also it says now a major feature film. I don't really remember, but I feel like I've seen something about that film before. I think it's some kind of like murder mystery type thing. A lot of uh, New Zealand authors stuff, especially earlier ones, are like literary style books. I don't know, but I've just opened it randomly and found out there's a character called Penelope. So... We're excited about that one. Um, the other one I picked up is actually this one, Life After Life. Wow, that lighting, huh? Uh, <laughs> it's just the sun. And I don't have this set. Oh, yeah, I do have this set to be a bit bright. Hang on. We'll put it back to some kind of normal. And then maybe you'll be able to see it. But then I look so dark. Do I? It might be different. Anyway, I'm not a videographer despite making videos. Uh, I bought this one, Kate Atkinson, Life After Life. Now... I only recognized the author's name and then I was like, yeah, isn't that book on my TBR? The book I have on my TBR is like a completely different cover. So I almost skipped over this, but this is something about like someone who like lives their lives over and over again. It says on the back with this cute little dog, uh, it says, what if you had the chance to live your life again and again until you finally got it right? Honestly, 100%. Although sometimes I think uh, it wouldn't really work like that because you kind of just get bored, I think. Like things that worked well on the first time, the second time you'd be like, yeah, but I don't really want to do this again. So anyway, it's a concept I'm interested in. So I'm excited to pick this up and I'm impressed with myself for noticing that this was that book, even though the cover is completely different than anything I've seen before. Like I've, I've never seen this cover before. So that's all the books I got. Let me put this on brighter because I just, I'm, I don't know what it will actually look like. But for me, right now, this looks better. I don't know. 
Anyway, reading wise, this is back here because I did read some of this today. I'm about halfway through, so I've read the first two sections, the daughter and the comedian, and I am getting more into it. I feel like the stories aren't having the emotional impact to me that the first book especially did. Uh, the second one, less so. This one, like the stories are okay, but maybe it's just a little bit too much of the same concept repetitively. I don't know, but I will continue. I'm definitely doing a little bit better at focusing and getting through it. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is while I was doing a little, little tiny bit of housework today uh, is that <laughs> I was listening to Ruby Fever. Uh, I actually went back and started it again from the end of the first chapter because I realized even though I'd listened to the next couple of chapters while I was driving around in traffic the other day, I was not paying attention and I listened to it again and I definitely picked up on a lot more. It just helps a lot more when you can focus on things, right? One thing I will say about this series is they do tend to be like these big jumps in time and I feel a little bit like ripped off because I just love spending time with these characters and this family so much and so whenever they're like oh yeah and then we skipped over a bunch of time and by the way this person had a daughter and there was this whole big drama where someone tried to kill someone like it'll just mention these events and I'm like did she write a short story somewhere talking about these events or do we just never get to find out about these events I feel like this series could have been way longer if she had fully developed all the stuff that happens to them. And like they're constantly doing investigations and sometimes they'll refer back to ones that have happened in the gaps. Like I want those stories. Why am I not getting those stories? But I can also kind of see that she's really hitting on kind of the big formative events in their life, which probably do make for better stories, but I just want everything because I love spending time with these characters. So basically in this particular book Catalina has this mentor uh, and he is now in a lot of trouble and she's really having to bring everyone together and use all her abilities, everything he's taught her to try and figure out who's done this thing to him. But of course she's got the support of her family and her love interest and I just love the way Alona Andrews writes these magical worlds and these mysteries and the way the characters work through the problem. It really, I just, I think I just love the problem solving. You know, like I watch Taskmaster all the time and I really like it. And again, I think I just like watching people or reading about people problem solving because problem solving is fun. Although I'm glad that my problem solving in real life doesn't have life or death consequences, even though I probably get stressed, like more stressed than these characters who have actual life and death consequences. What's up with that? Anyway, I really should go and do some more housework. I could listen to some more of my audiobook. But whether I'm actually going to be motivated enough to do that, I'm not sure. I'm also having a fight with myself about whether I go for a run. I feel like I haven't gone for a run in a really long time. And I also just don't know if I can trust the weather. It keeps doing like surprise, like heavy rain. I don't mind rain walks, but I don't want like heavy rain suddenly. So I don't know. Anyway, I'll work it out. I'll read some more stuff and then I'll let you know how we're going. Hello, so it's currently Friday. Honestly, I don't know when I last updated this vlog. Possibly it could have been before last Friday. Who knows? I thought I was going to have managed to get rid of all my project drama before the last week before the deadline, but of course a bunch of people came back with dramas and problems, uh, so I had to spend a bunch of time sorting that out. But can I say I'm optimistic about work being less work from next week? Either way, from next week, there's only 10 weeks till Christmas, so things are going to start ramping down for that. But anyway, I did actually work for the first half of today, but now I'm going to try and do some reading. To be honest, uh, I've been reading Before Your Memory Fades, and uh, I've been on like five pages left for the whole week, pretty much. I just don't care. I feel like in this particular book, uh, the themes that it's exploring and the ideas that it's exploring are very similar, very one note, and I feel like they're nothing new from the previous books. Basically just this idea that your loved ones, even if they die, would still want you to be happy, and it just keeps telling me the same thing, and... But it, it didn't feel like this added anything new on top of what came from the first two books. So in the end, like, this was fine. But it, it wasn't 
anything like what I was hoping it would be. So that's a shame. Uh, I feel like I've read something else since I was talking to you. Oh yeah, that's right. I was reading Ruby Fever by Alona Andrews. I finished it. I loved it. There were a few hints in there with things to do with the third sister and who her love interest might be and like maybe some other things that might be going on. And so I really do hope that they will write more books in this world. I found some stuff online saying that they have said they have some ideas but that they are just focusing on other ideas at the moment. So either way, it's probably going to be a long time, which makes me so sad because I just really love the characters. This was very action packed and there were a lot of like surprises. Actually, what was really great about this one is I realized that a lot of things that had happened in the earlier books, even the previous trilogy, that I had just thought were like random things that were wrapped up within those books. Actually, there were some bigger things going on that we got revealed and that made me want to go back and reread the whole series. And I will definitely do that at some point because I really enjoyed it. And there is another, maybe two series by Alona Andrews that I haven't read yet. So I am going to have to pick them up at some point because I don't think I want to live life without Alona Andrews books to read. I just love her characters. I think she does so well at making them seem really realistic and just like family. And this series is very focused on family and working together. So after I finished that audiobook, I did start listening to Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiebatter. So this is the first book in the Dreamers trilogy, which is a spin-off from the Raven Cycle. The main character that's from the Raven Cycle that's in this one is Ronan and also his brothers Declan and Matthew. Uh, there's also this girl named Hennessy who is an art forger and she has some other girls around her that I really love. And also, so I've read this book before and I've also read the second book in the trilogy. The third one is coming out very soon. In fact, I think it actually comes out in a few days, but I probably won't be able to get my hands on it straight away. But there was some things that we learned at the end of the second book that already are making my reread of this first book very different. Um, there is a character that is introduced and I'm always like, interpreting the descriptions of this character and the things that they're saying so very differently. So this is another one where like you can kind of see how well things have been set up on a reread. But also I really love Maggie Stiebatter's writing. I do think that I don't know if a lot of people who like The Raven Cycle will like Call Down the Hawk because it doesn't have that same friend group dynamic. It's much more focused on the the weirdness and the magic and there's a bunch of characters that we follow and I like all those characters they're all very unique and different but they're also like older so whereas the Raven Cycle was very much a YA book dealing with teen stuff this one is more new adult most of the characters are just kind of becoming adults trying to find their place in the world as well as dealing with this crazy magic thing that's going on. I can't talk about what that magic is because the more I talk about this series, the more I think it's spoilers for the Raven Cycle. But basically there is a kind of magic that some of the characters use and some other characters believe is going to bring about the apocalypse. So they're trying to kill off all the people who use that magic. But it's Maggie Steve out of weirdness, so it's nowhere near as simple as that. But I'm just loving this reread. I don't know how far through I am. 25% apparently. So I'm going to see how much of this I can get through in the weekend. I, I do also have the audio book of the next book, Mr. Impossible. Um, I really don't like the covers of this series. I'm kind of holding out on buying this, these books, even though I'd really love to own them because I love the series. I'm really hoping at some point we'll get some better covers and then I'll buy those ones. Anyway, right now I'm going to try and finish this. I don't know why it's taken me so long to get through these five pages. Uh, I also need to do a bunch of housework because I've been sucking at that this week as well. And then I honestly, I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to go for a walk. Is it going to rain? Probably. That would be just my luck. Hello. So it's been a while since I filmed the rest of this vlog. And to be honest, I thought about throwing it in the bin. But I did want to share what I found at the book fair. So I guess I'll finish this off. So let me tell you about the things I was reading and my final thoughts. Firstly, I finished reading the last five pages of Before Your Memory Fades and it didn't really change my opinion. I just couldn't bring myself to care. Nothing interesting happened in those last five pages. I think, having had some time to sit with it as well, that at this point I would probably only really recommend reading that first book as a standalone. 
I don't know that the next two books add enough to really be worth it. I think you get enough from the first book. So that's a shame, but I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. Then the next thing that I read is The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Crowell. I don't remember where I was up to. Quite far, I think. I really enjoyed this, but there's a but. Uh, I guess the thing is I really enjoyed this. I love the writing style. I do feel like the pacing is a little bit off in some points, and I think it's because this book just covers so much and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because all the things that it's covering are things that would probably be happening. So it's not like it's a stretch to be including any of the different themes that it's including, but it is just a lot. And the fact that we've also got like the sabotage mystery going on at the same time, it's a lot. And it's, it's almost like it being a lot is part of the, the good part of this book, but it just... I don't know, sometimes it didn't feel completely cohesive. I also still don't know how I feel about uh, the main character basically has anorexia and in some ways it was handled really well and in other ways just some parts I didn't feel that happy with. But it's so hard when you address topics like that from like a first person narrative because it's really giving you this character's perspective of an eating disorder. But of course there's so many different ways that people can experience an eating disorder that it's not really covering the full spectrum, but that's because it's one person's experience. But I guess it just feels then like the theme wasn't fully addressed, uh, along with all the other themes that are in this book. But still, like, I'm criticizing it, but I did really enjoy this. So if you're interested in the Lady Astronaut series, I definitely recommend them. I think you'd probably want to read them in order, although technically you could read them out of order. Minor spoilers, but I think these books are less about the plot and more about just the characters' experiences. While also, like, they have okay plots, but, like, knowing what happens at the end of each book doesn't necessarily ruin the actual plot of what's happening. I don't know if I'm making sense anymore. Uh... I know there's going to be a fourth book in this series. It isn't out yet though, but I will be keeping an eye out for that for sure. Then the other things that I was reading since I last talked to you is the audiobooks for the first two books in the Dreamers trilogy, setting myself up to read Grey Warren. I am actually in the middle of filming a new vlog where I read Grey Warren. I'm not going to go into my thoughts about that because they are in the other vlog, which I need to update just after this. Anyway, I read Call Down the Hawk and Mr. Impossible, listen to the audiobooks. I really love them. I actually think I liked both these books better on the reread, but I do wonder if that's because I listened to the audiobook, and I think my first read of the physical books, I found the pacing a bit slow, but the audiobook kind of, just the way an audiobook flows where you don't have to put effort into consuming it, uh, so the slower bits just kind of still keep coming. I think maybe that made up for some of the slower pacing and there really are just some really amazing concepts and amazing lines within those stories that I feel like I can't get into at all but uh, I really love that series and having reread those books I was very excited to go into Grey Warren. Again I'm not going to tell you my thoughts on Grey Warren until my next vlog. So I think this vlog is already way too long but let me know what you thought about the books that I got at the book fair. Are there any that you think I should pick up earlier than the others? Or have you read any of the books that I read during this reading vlog? Because I would also love to know your thoughts about those. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.